As for the influence of the corporations that build the voting systems, there is substantial influence and that comes from the small number of them and the somewhat monopolistic nature of the voting systems vendors. And that's partly because of the difficulty of gaining federal certification and that is one other way that the, the federal authority uh, exerts some influence over the, to produce a kind of uniformity. So there is a certification program which the federal government manages that states may or may not use that cause the voting systems to be checked uh, and tested uh, in certain aspects about accuracy and accessibility and so forth, reliability. So if the state requires that, then the uh, voting systems may meet a certain standard. Those standards are not keeping up with the uh, innovations that are taking place either by the voting system vendors or by the state laws that are being put in place. And ironically, in a way, the, it's not the laws that are guiding the development of the voting uh, methods and the voting systems. It's the vendors who are coming up with innovative ideas and then providing them in their list of capabilities. And the states are uh, more or less adopting those without uh, without much consideration. So this is a little disturbing because the voting system vendors have a different agenda than either the public or the officials. Although the, the vendor's agenda largely aligns more with the officials than with the public. Vendors are interested in efficiency, vendors and the officials, sorry, interested in low cost, efficiency, uh, and the public would be more interested in transparency. And one of my, my general agendas is to try to achieve transparency of the election records so that one could audit, regardless of what the insiders are doing, that a member of the public could actually audit based on records that are provided to the public. The vendors and the election officials prefer not to change. Of course, the vendors would like to keep selling the equipment they have. They'd like to keep their current customers, and they tend to dominate once they have a big foothold in a state, or maybe they are selling all of the equipment in a the state. They'd like to remain so, and we definitely see that as a, uh, a major problem for innovation. The election officials would not like to see innovation because that tends to cause them a lot of headache to retrain and uh, well, whereas in Colorado we actually have relatively few people managing the election because of the mail ballot, in uh, other states there is a huge number of citizens who are involved. And in fact, in theory, the, the election does belong to the citizens in the United States. And the, the people called election judges are called judges because they should be making a judgment based on what the law says about each decision they're making. And they're making decisions about whether a mark on a piece of paper is a vote or it's not a vote, or a signature on an envelope of a returned ballot is the signature of the voter or it's not. Those are obviously crucial decisions which will affect the outcome of the election. And unfortunately, they are more likely recently being treated as employees who are required to follow the direction of someone above them rather than as judges. And I'm a little bit surprised that we still call them election judges under this circumstance. So in many cases, the election officials are hiring their government employees or, or telling them that to, uh, or asking them, I should say, to be election judges so that the, the bulk of the people, the citizens actually running the election are in fact government employees. This is not a good thing. It doesn't provide good independence or oversight because those people are, are not going to complain about a, a mistake in the system because their, their job eventually, their, their long-term job depends on it.